this iron. You want to hop on board, actually? Sure. Just love how much inertia it looks like. Mm -hmm. Back right out. Uh, but yeah, so this is the power we'd have with three people pedaling bicycle wheels. And Dina, you're gonna steer for us. You got a good handle on that. You'd be a little auto tiller, babe. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh oh, no, that's gonna hit us into another boat. You wanna go this way, okay? So the motor mount's a little bit different than what we had before. Uh, we no longer have the strain gauges and the instrumentation that we were really excited about using to characterize the efficiency of the motor propeller. And that's because in our maiden voyage, after taking her in the water, after fixing up the hull, um, as we cranked the power more than about a thousand watts, we noticed a huge amount of vibration coming out of the propeller shaft. And we didn't realize just how important it was that the motor mount had to be quite rigidly on plane. Um, and the strain gauges, the way that they were secured to the motor, it allowed some flex like this and the whole shaft was able to wobble where it went through the shaft, uh, sorry, where it went through the, the stern of the boat. Um, we upgraded the through hole for the shaft itself so that it's using a dripless shaft seal. Um, one of the benefits of this is that there's much less torque and friction where the shaft goes through the boat, or <laughs> where the shaft goes through the hull of the boat instead of having the compressed packing material. Um, and that allows us to have more accurate sensitivity for measuring uh, very small force and torque differences when we get to the point of instrumenting it. Uh, but yeah, most importantly, we, we had to readapt the mount to just be very rigid. Um, we're gonna have to rethink how we then do the strain gauges in order to measure the torque and the force because we still want to uh, resume those experiments but it was most important that we could crank up to higher power levels than just a thousand watts at this stage. So the hold for the engine is now much, much cleaner. We repainted everything, and uh, after scrubbing clean all of the leftover residue from having a diesel engine in here, all of the exhaust dust, all of the uh, carbon buildup and everything, um, and now we actually have a appropriate battery bank for the sailboat. So when we left uh, last time, we were just using a single e-bike pack. Um, here, what I ended up doing was getting some 72 volt, 25 amp hour batteries just custom made out of 21700 lithium cells, um, and I've got 10 of those packs all together. So that gives me nominally uh, 72 volts at 240 amp hours. Um, and that's uh, uh, basically 14 kilowatt hours of, sorry, 18 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. Um, and I initially expected that this much battery would only give me uh, sort of a 40 kilometer, 50 kilometer range based on what the diesel engine uh, consumed to go that kind of distance. Um, but as we'll talk about a bit later, it's actually giving me twice what I was expecting for that. So this 18 kilowatt hour pack in and of itself uh, more than meets all of our needs, but that's not going to stop me from upgrading it even further in the future. Uh, so this is the uh, current electrical panel. Uh, mostly this is a 12 volt distribution network, but you can see in the top left I've got three satiator chargers. Um, so that way when I'm plugged in, you're cute. <laughs> uh, when I'm plugged into the uh, marina or any place where I have an outlet, I'm able to charge the batteries at just over one kilowatt, the 360 watts each. That can fully charge this whole battery bank from flat in, uh, what would that be? It'd be about 18 hours. Um, and, uh, and there's no reason we couldn't add more satiators, but for now, one kilowatt seemed like an appropriate amount of uh, charge current. So in the demonstration video, we were running the motor just with a single phase runner motor controller. Uh, that's still the controller that we've got hooked up on here. It's not as powerful as we'd ideally like. Uh, what happens with this small controller is that um, above about 2000 watts, eventually the phase amps out of the wire will cause the controller to get hot and go into thermal rollback. So it's limiting us to about 2000 watts of continuous power. Power, um, but we could easily upgrade that to a higher phase amp motor controller and then be able to run the motor upwards of uh, possibly four to five thousand watts continuous input power. Um, we'll talk a bit more about the the thermal behavior of the motor and how hot it gets when we run it there but that seems to be the um, maximum continuous operating power we'll be able to do which is precisely what I was hoping we could get out of one of these hub motors used to direct drive a prop this way. Okay. All right. Um, so our controls here is using just a cycle analyst where we 3D printed a uh, covered enclosure that lets us have a potentiometer for controlling the motor power and just a couple toggle switches, really just a forwards reverse switch going straight to the motor controller's forwards reverse input um, and then a straight up potentiometer um, showing us the output voltage that we're feeding and once that 
cranks up, you can now hear the motor spinning, see our current draw, and then that's going forwards. We're gonna be backing out of this marina, so I'll run it in reverse. And the reverse change is just a simple flip of a switch like that. Um, this is running the solar version of our cycle analyst firmware. Um, so when I have the time, we're still expecting to hook up a fairly large solar array, both on the back and on the sides of the boat. Um, and with the solar array hooked up, we'll also have a readout of how many solar watts we're getting charging the battery. And we'll get a nice indication of our net consumption. Um, our watt hours per kilometer both with and without the solar factored in there. So this solar firmware that we made for solar bikes is going to apply perfectly well to the boat. One of the really fun things about the cycle analyst here is that we're able to use it uh, to measure the actual hull speed of the boat itself. Um, so where you see this kilometers per hour figure, um, we've got a paddle wheel speed sensor mounted under the hull of the boat and we just figured out what was the approximate wheel diameter that gave us a speed so here you see it's running a 5.8 inch wheel with four pole. Um, that gives us an equivalent speed on this display that matches our GPS speed when we're uh, motoring the boat at slack tide. Um, so now we have a, a accurate readout, not just of our distance above ground, but our distance through the water, which is the most important factor in uh, characterizing boat performance. So, so now you're gonna see the basic correlation between water speed and power with this 25 foot sailboat. So 500 watts gets us a pretty steady average five kilometers an hour. So that gives us 10, sorry, 100 watt hours per kilometer of overall consumption to do five clicks at 500 watts. Um, if we crank this up to a thousand watts, we'll see the speed of the boat's gonna increase. And I think we do about seven and a half kilometers an hour. Um, I like to talk in kilometers an hour instead of knots, just because then it's much easier to correlate the consumption rates of the boat with what we see on a bicycle. Uh, because we're going through some waves right now, the wheel speed indicator on the hull sort of bounces around a fair bit. Um, and uh, so yeah, so this is a thousand watts. Uh, that boat is much more than a thousand watts. <laughs> So speed on the water is a little deceptive, so it looks like you're going insanely fast when you make a big huge spray like that, but you're really still going slower than an average person pedaling a bicycle with no motor. Yeah. Uh, um, so a thousand watts is an interesting number for me because that is about uh, what we should be able to do when we're running uh, a very large solar array. So if we have solar panels, not just over the back of the boat, but also running down the sides. We would potentially be able to capture a thousand watts of solar on a sunny day like this. Yeah. Um, and so just having some idea of what our continuous speed would be using uh, purely solar capture. And it happens quite often summer sailing here on the west coast that the winds are dead calm, but the sun is out of blazing. And uh, that would let us truck along at the equivalent of about four knots. Um, so yeah, so now we're up to 1500 watts, which is getting closer to my preferred kind of sustained cruising speeds um, and then uh, now you can see we're closer to eight and a half kilometers an hour awesome. and uh, and really as I mentioned for this particular motor controller the maximum we can sustain is 2,000 watts I could temporarily crank this right up to 3,000 watts so there you see 2,900 watts um, as we run at this kind of power levels you see the motor temperature increasing we're 39 degrees right now um, it would uh, reach up to about 100 uh, Celsius. Uh, we've added stator aid to the motor, which uh, did a decent job of dropping our temperatures by about 12 degrees. Yeah. Um, but uh, what would happen before the motor has a chance to even get that hot, the controller is going to start to overheat and then it's going to limit our power automatically. So I'm just going to, but yeah, now you can see we're getting over 10 kilometers an hour here um, when we run it at this thousand watts. And I'm just going to drop us down to 2000. Um, and 2000 has really been my kind of preferred zone for the trade-off of range and still having a decent speed in the water. Uh, so this gets us nine and a half kilometers an hour um, using just a tad over 200 watt hours per kilometer. Uh, so this battery bank that we have in here, which is 18 kilowatt hours, um, gives us 90 kilometers of, uh, of pure motoring distance. So on a trip, we'd hope to be able to sail for some of that, but it lets us know what our circle of travel is without any auxiliary charging available.
one of the nice things, of course, about electric boats is the ability to use the propeller to recapture, regenerate, just like you do on a vehicle. Um, on this setup here, I've got it dialed to if I turn the throttle below a point, you can now see negative watts. Uh, so here I am actually charging the battery. Um, and the peak wattage you can get really depends, of course, on the speed of the boat, on how much wind that we have going. Uh, so right now it's pretty light wind, and you see if I try to do too much regen, um, the watts went down to zero and actually went positive. Um, here I was able to get, you know, maybe 60, 60 watts, you saw briefly in this fairly light wind. When it's a stronger wind out, I can do about 100, 120 watts. Um, that would change quite a bit with different propellers. Uh, but yeah, it's one of the things I was really interested to quantify a little bit with these electric conversions was uh, what you could realistically expect for energy recaptured. And 100 watts isn't bad, uh, but it's not nearly as much as you can get from some simple to deploy solar panels. Um, but nice to know you have that as an option. So here we are at the sun setting, the winds have mostly died down and our sailing speed had reduced substantially. Um, and, uh, and one of the nice benefits that we find with this electric drive is you can easily add just a couple hundred watts in these light wind sailing conditions and get quite a nice step up in your speed. So we were sailing there, it was about six kilometers an hour. Uh, we added 400 watts and it got us right up to nine, nine and a half kilometers an hour. And, uh, and that's something you just can't do easily with a diesel engine.